first, first thing on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of September 21st, uh, which we, we talked about last time. So uh, a couple of things I want to mention in those minutes. So does, has everybody had a chance to look at those minutes? And any questions or corrections on that? Going forward, Anna and Ajay and I have talked, changes in the minutes in the future will be highlighted. So we know what the changes actually are. These these were dates only, so there's really nothing in there that's different. But going forward, we need to do that. Okay, one of the things that I I, I think we just kind of skipped over it quickly, and I want Ajay to touch base on, on that is in the minutes it said that uh, the, the library won the back in the fold award for unique management of the library's collection agencies because of the high rate of fines and book returns. And I wanted her to mention that who actually is in charge of that and why we're doing so. So um, Lee Yoder, our account clerk too, she is in charge of collections and um, she has done an amazing job at bringing um, humanity into the process. And uh, because of that, we are seeing um, materials being returned. We are seeing um, collection accounts that have been in arrears for many, 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 many years. Um, we're seeing people make payments on, and we're and she is understanding that it is best to have a library user today than someone sitting with a library fine that is a year old, five years old, seven years old, 10 years old. And what she wants to do is bring them back. And so she works with them. She does not uh, give it away. She does not wipe everything away. She listens. And because of that, Unique Management has reported to us that we have been one of the libraries that had the largest return rate of patrons back into, quote unquote, the fold. And that is Ms. Lee Yoder. Thank you. And I was talking to her the other day, and what I said, you know, what else do you do? And she said, well, <laughs> I try to collect the discs that are not turned in when people return the disc folder, they're empty. I said, well, how many of those you get? She said, oh, about 50 a month. I said, what? And she said, well, people, most of the time when I call them and say, you return this without a disc in it, they say, oh, it must be in my player. And, and so she gets it back. And I said, well, what if they don't turn it back? And she said, it's $40. And so when she explains it to them that way, it's amazing. She said, well, we get everything back. So that, that's really, she, she really is doing an outstanding job. And I just wanted to, to let, let everyone know who is responsible for that. And then again, that award that we got. Okay, uh, do I have a motion to accept the minutes as, as adjusted? Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So carried, motion carries. Okay. Uh, next is, uh, my report and my report uh, basically I'm going to defer to Jennifer later. Uh, uh, Suzanne. <laughs> <laughs> Suzanne later. It's been a really long week. I'm sorry. Uh, for every, for a call, especially the search committee. Uh, but um, so I want to do that, but I did talk to a group. And one of the things I'd like to talk back to this time, but next time. Is, I'd like everybody to look at it, is I talked to a ladies group of about 35 or 40 people this, this past week about the library. And one of the things that came up was the charge that the library does for library cards for people who don't live in the county. And I think, I don't know if I mentioned that in the search committee or somewhere. But, and, and checking it, uh, we charge $40 for a library card for four years. And so that's, is that right? That is, that's, that's, it, that's it, internet only yeah. or, or e-card only. And so, you know, I don't think that's outrageous at all. Matter of fact, I think it's probably too cheap. 
and I would like you all to think about that for the future. And next time, I'm going to bring that back up again, and, and let's look at it for the, for the future of what our library character looks like. Because right now, our library looks great. Lock, who the lock is it? Lock Merrill College students? So, no, like, no, no. Or just out of county. Out of county. Out of, county. Like out of, out of county. Yeah, out right. of county cards. If they want full um, access to the collection, that is twenty five dollars per year per card. So, if a family of four wanted one, and each member got a card, it would be a hundred dollars each year. Uh, however, that doesn't mean that mom can't check out things for others and our limits are quite high and, and uh, flexible. Um, the e-card that Andy mentioned is $10 per year and it's valid for four years. So $40 for a four year period. That includes access to things like lynda.com and universal classes to name a few, Canopy and all of these are, uh, are um, resources the library pays handsomely for. Linda itself is $15,000 a year. So T Tuition is calculated in Maryville City based on how much money a funding body puts in divided by the number of resident students. So that's something to think about, okay. you know, based on how many patrons Blount County has and Alcoa has and Maryville City has and the money that, that those funding bodies donate to the library or just taking the whole um, the whole total of patrons and dividing it into those that total amount that those three funding bodies contribute to me would be a fair way to look at it. I don't, I don't even have any idea how much that would be. But take the, the money from the three funding bodies and divide it by the number of patrons that we have. Yeah, and that's how much money our funding bodies are spending Per patron. That's true. That's and true. See what I'm that's saying? Correct. Yeah, that's yeah. correct. Yeah. But people who live out of county don't pay anything. Exactly. So, so that's what I'm saying. That's kind of a, a, a something to think cost about. Cost should be a minimum. Oh, so you're saying yes. they figure so out that one. Yes. Oh, I got you. Yes. Yeah. yes. Anyway, I don't really want to get into yeah. that today, but, but I want you to think about that for the future yeah. and see where we're, where we're going. I don't want to chase people away for, for sure. Okay. Um, well, that, that's basically it for me again. I would defer uh, later. And so let's move on to uh, Janine, your, your report. Thanks. All right. I just wanted to uh, touch base again. Um, Regarding the, the director's report, uh, we just had our first uh, book, book club for kids. That's a weekly event, and it will be outside while the weather's nice, and then it will probably be brought in or adapted in some way. Um, what is it? Uh, our spooky zine is going to be, we're going to, it's going to close for submission. So if you have a teen in your life and they want to share a spooky image or story, uh, please uh, ask them to go to our Facebook page and submit it um, via the link there. What is a spooky zine? It is a spooky magazine that's made online. Um, we will quote unquote publish it. Um, just for the kids to okay. see something that they've created. Uh, what is it? Uh, we had this past Saturday the Walk the Chalk event. Um, boy, Lee's just coming, everything's coming up Lee. That again was Lee Yoder. Um, what is it? Uh, she wanted to um, come up with a artistic event and came up with um, a chalk walk. And so she partnered with our adult services team and that event was this past Saturday. About 23 participants came, and if you'd like to see pictures, um, please check out our Facebook page. That's where you can see that there. Um, so the next thing is the research that I have found regarding our book drop animation, our automation, and our RFID. Um, what is it? Uh, I realized that I did not get this uh, report out to you in you know, the usual time frame, I do apologize. As we all can say, it's been a pretty busy time. So um, what is it? Uh, I, I can either recap some of it for you, but if you've all had an opportunity to read it, I can, you know, save you all from hearing my voice 
that much longer. You want to recap because we're going to bring it up in old business, and I'm going to ask you about that. So uh, I did want to thank just to say thank you for doing this follow up. Like I really appreciate it. The information that was presented here was very helpful. Like, thank you very much. Did, did everybody get a chance to read that? I like that you got recommendations. They all gave you a recommendation of something that they would have done differently. Well, I, that was interesting, I thought. And I, I shared with Andy in our conversation earlier today, every library that I spoke to, I shared with them the idea of us closing down, and every one of them was like, I wish we would have done that. So, yeah, just. So, um, do you have any questions about the information that was presented to you? Anjane, I did have a question for that. Um, after the, all the research in public libraries, um, you know, has your mind or did that just secure, you know, concrete more that we're in the right path? Definitely. Okay. And here is why. Every single vendor I talked to, they, and several of them went with Biblioteca. I don't really want this in the minutes. Um, they did not have good follow-up customer service. Uh, they said when it was 3M, they were great. And then Biblioteca got them, and they say as soon as Biblioteca has your business, they don't have customer service. And so that made me feel very good. Yesterday, and it's not in this report because I had to get this out to you guys, yesterday I spoke to a um, library out in Iowa that has Biblioteca automation RFID and they use Atrium, which is our ILS. And so I wanted to see how the third party software and our Atrium would talk to each other. And this young lady is trying to move away from Biblioteca as fast as possible. She says, I decided not to continue with their service level agreements. And now they don't, they will, I have to beg and plead and, and then connect to the right person. And she goes, it's just not worth it not worth it at all. So she's in conversation with FE Technologies to bring um, more of their product in line. That's awesome. So. Thank you. Just to follow up also, I thought the two out of the three candidates for the director's position who have actually gone through this also. And they both said that the Biblioteca was terrible as far as service was concerned, never would return their phone calls, and they were just having all the time. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Like I mentioned, you, you know, that's exactly what we wanted, so I appreciate it. Okay, any, any more questions on, on that area? Okay. Okay, so uh, in that case, if, if uh, before we move on, I have included in the board packet after uh, our financials the foundation funding request and uh, I would like to um, go forward with that. Yes. So do you want to you want to jump in on that right now or do you want to move on? I'm fine jumping on that. Jump in on it. Okay. Right. So go to the funding request here. What I would this is a complete funding request. This is the update that we have had that Anjanae has looked at now research, and that now we know how this compares to at least two other companies. And this is, again, by far away better than, than the others. So what I would like to do is get a motion to present this to the foundation for funding. And we have a second, thank you. Any opposed? Oh, in favor. Wow. Okay. Hey, thank you. Um, so, and Angela, we will forward this on to you with any documentation that, that we have that you may need or any more, more documentation. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is great. Yeah. Okay. And we'll come back later and talk about how to implement and oh, Absolutely. Yeah. closing and all that. Absolutely. I, I yes. think what she has to do, first of all, is now call. Get it on order and see if we can get it in here as soon as possible. Well, we got to make sure that the foundation is going to find it. <laughs> and then as soon as we get the green light from, from foundation. Now, I will be reaching out to Al Skinner saying that we've made it to the next phase. Um, and that hopefully by November 7th or 
sooner if that's, you know, if it's in it. <laughs> yes. Our next meeting is November 12th, but since it's here in the library the morning of the 12th, I can probably get the and sign paperwork or at least a decision to you still that day on the 12th. That'd be great. Thank you. Um, what is it? And uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you for the extra work. Uh, yes. I think it yes. gives us much more yes. confidence. All, and all of us. Potentially spending this kind of money. I am. Um, I. Uh, you know, you learn some every project, and I needed to have this when I first made the presentation, but I got too excited, and so we were really we got excited. There. With you. <laughs> I was, I was like, I just kept thinking of that sixty-seven hours. I was like, a week. <laughs> <laughs> it is good. It's good. I understand that sixty-seven hours is not money yeah. saved okay thank you very much uh you will see that i listed the other projects that are um on our radar um so if you'll skip down to the fourth bullet point where it says uh kelly donation team room we got pricing late I don't know what day it was. I think it was Friday evening um, from Chris Soro and Joseph Construction on uh, what the um, the project would cost for the building of the wall, if you will, um, and what that entailed, uh, as well as the scope of work, and then the drawing. Um, there is not a proposal or a funding request because this is not the end of this project. There's a technological aspect to it, and I'm getting quotes for that. I wanted to just, because it feels like every month, I'm like, not yet, uh, not yet. So I wanted to let you know that we are making forward movement on this, that this is a loose price. Um, for this element of it, but that there is more to come. And when we have the quotes for the complete project, I will be proposing that in a funding request. And we have been meeting with the, with Joseph yes. Construction and meeting them down on pricing. So yes, we're getting, we're getting that. <laughs> they explained to me that the first one was the catch your breath quote because I saw it and was like, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> This one was much better. Okay. Um, any questions on that? I don't have a question on this one specifically, but something that came up during the, the director uh, events of the weekend was uh, I just wanted to check and see the uh, was it the little amphitheater space that's over by the kids area. Is that on our radar um, as something that's going to receive some attention? I guess that area has been locked for a long time. It's so the so the the Shakespeare Garden area yeah. little amphitheater was a fundraiser, um, and in it is tile or marble tiles that have etched uh, names in it. Unfortunately, at some stage, it was perhaps acid washed, and it destroyed the caulking, the yeah. you know the grout. The stuff that sticks it together, oh. and uh, what is it? Um, we were going to have our maintenance team pressure wash it, but then one of our maintenance team um, had a health condition that had to be addressed immediately. I'm happy to say he started back yesterday, Great. so we can put that back. The first thing we wanted to do is just uh, like pressure water wash it. Yeah to see how it would come up, because a lot of it is like a calcification. Um, so it may, we don't know if what needs to be done is if the, the marble itself needs to be re-etched or and the grouting needs to be done or what. So that's the first step. Uh, but it has very much, its life has been very much, we're about to approach it and then something big happens. The facilities team um, is now taking a different approach to projects. So, um, what is it? Uh, we are we are 
identifying them and then putting a timeline towards them. And that's going to be our focus until completion. So I can, I can definitely say that you bringing it to me puts that back on a higher priority. So I'll make sure. Is it possible to have that list for the next board meeting? For the projects? Mm -hmm. In terms of facility work? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. I just, I, like we said, we didn't know about it. So if we can help those things or go along the way without it becoming where to close it down and, you know, work on it ahead of time or plan financially ahead of time. Okay. Maybe it'd be good timing. Absolutely. It's, because we have it. It's, it's in a spreadsheet okay. and we can definitely give you a facilities project update. I think it probably wouldn't hurt if we had any other projects yeah. that you might have. But a comprehensive yeah. list. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. A lot. You want to talk about your library report form? Survey? Oh, uh, what is it? Uh, I see public library survey. Yeah. I just want to touch base on the you will see the Harmon donation in the children's area. You'll see that starting to show up in each of the board packets. Our numbers are um, improving in, in terms of COVID. Um, so we might see them come the next. Um, the next board packet, I might also be bringing you two funding requests. The first one being if the uh, teen room is is going well. And then the children's area has been finalized, but I just find that we've had a lot going on, so I wouldn't mind bringing it to everyone's attention again. Um, it has been approved. Not, okay, so see, see, that's why we keep bringing it up. <laughs> All right, so I will be bringing you that one as we well. We have not that to you. No. no. Okay. All so right. Not in the team room, how we've seen the designs and we've seen Yeah, and I thought we held, held off because of COVID. It, 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 even presented. I think it's just that this, this, this board hasn't felt that the Board of Trustees hasn't felt that they've taken the funding. So it hasn't come to foundation yet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So in the next board packet, you will have you will have the Harmon funding request. Okay. Could you check? Is, do you know if we got our got the check back again? Both the Harmon gift and the um, Kelly gift have received this Okay. Uh, what is it? Um, Robert and I met uh, regarding the community survey yesterday. Um, COVID really has, and I, I don't want to spoil it, but an exciting part is that COVID has really shifted many of our library patrons onto our online resources and services. And um, that was uh, the staff worked extremely hard during the shutdown to take everything they did in person and make sure it translated up online and that presence is is paying off it's been noticed and appreciated uh the next board packet so the next board november board pack is probably it's looking big um <laughs> It is going to have the findings for the community survey, and Robert will be here to uh, answer any additional questions. We will have all the data, um, so if anybody wants to do a deeper dive. Okay. Can we get that kind of early, like as soon as you all get that done? Can we get that like before the day before? Yeah, I mean, I know it's been crazy because my life has been crazy too. So I usually try the Wednesday before the board meeting. That would be great. The Wednesday, yeah, yeah, yeah. that would be great. Because so. that would give us time that we can look over it and not have to talk about. Yes, every single thing. Yes, <laughs> and uh, what is it? Does that also mean that 
in the November board packet, we were going to review um, actually two policies. Okay, push that back. Okay, good, because one of them was the emergency and safety plan, yeah. and that's two. Okay, we're good. All right. Okay. January would be a great time to do that. No. So take a break until January? Mm -hmm. I think everybody wants that. <laughs> okay, all right. No policy till January. We're all smiling. <laughs> the library board doesn't want to read. <laughs> Policy is a tough read. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, let's see. I can say. See, this is just this is just crazy. So I put under grants and regional reports that the um, that the public library standards uh, for the state of Tennessee has been completed. Um, by our library and submitted so it is being reviewed and I'm happy to say that that is done what a treat mm -hmm. what i failed to add though is we got our arpa award letter mm -hmm. and they are what is it uh, they have funded approximately and i approximately twenty four thousand dollars and the match is four thousand oh that's great that yeah. is exceptional so thank you arpa um, and I'll thanks, thanks for doing this too. If you all yeah. yes, 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 Told you how many times we breathe in, breathe out. Yeah. Okay. Any questions on the report? The entire report? Uh, just yeah. To include the financials, yes. Okay. I have a couple questions on the financials, uh, revenues. Um, your revenues are way up. Yes. Talk about that for a second. All right. So right now, if you look at our revenue sheet, you'll see that we are going gangbusters in uh, cafe and meeting room rentals, and. Um, I could be wrong, but in this instance, I really doubt it. I want to say that this is almost 95% uh, due to Chelsea Methania, our hospitality services coordinator. We have someone who is a true advocate. When I talk to you guys about taking away Sunday hours, this young lady was there saying, this is how many were, you know, how much money we're going to have to refund. Is this she her number one drive is making sure that cafe and these meeting rooms have their coffee services are set up and i think you're seeing that now also we thought this year would be mm -hmm. we didn't know what to expect so we were like okay we made one hundred one thousand dollars last year we can do it this year turns out we are doing very well but it is also very much 95 percent chelsea methania so if you see her, she's using the cafe, brown, kind of curly-ish hair, say hi and thank you. Doing a great job. And this afternoon she's back there trying to figure out healthy things for people to eat. They're creating healthy snacks to sit next to the wall. Thank so much for that. I really like the report. for the August meeting and uh, what, did you, what did you correct in that? I, I'm sorry, I totally forgot. It was under Anjane's report, I added clarification that the director would be part of the gift committee. The, uh, okay. That wasn't in there. And then the dates for the interviews had said 21st and 22nd and it was 20th and 22nd. So, so those were the two changes. It was already approved yeah. at the last meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's why it's So just for clarity, do you want to tell them why? Oh, that they're just always included, even if they're approved, just so you can see the corrections the next time to and see those, that I did it. And those corrections will be highlighted, so it's easy to. Okay. Any, let's see. Board reports from Angela. Board report. 
in her or town, and by the time it gets to you, we'll refer it out to some people. We met on October 8th, and our primary focus of business that day was learning how we would participate in the interviews with the next director of the BCPL. Um, we got our questions in a row, we figured out who was going to be where when, and we figured out a list of the traits we were looking for as a foundation for it, realizing that that might not match up exactly with what everyone else was looking for, but hopefully we would have enough in common that we would agree on a lot of it. Chad Hampton and Eliza Knatzer uh, came to the Thursday interviews and also participated in the lunch. I participated via Zoom on my phone as I drove cross country to a cousin's wedding in Minnesota. It was really exciting, except for a short outage, outage in service just east of St. Louis. They were great. <laughs> <laughs> and we were very impressed with all of the candidates. And we wanted to say thank you to the search committee and to this group for inviting us to be part of that. It was a work to prepare, just like it was for everyone, but I really feel like we have a chance and a say, and I think everyone was pleased at the, at the foundation board. We also appointed Bill Pope as the foundation board's representative to the BCPL Gifts Committee. Your work on updating gifts policy inspired us to dust ours off and take a look at what, what do we have on the books. And so we now have a final draft under consideration for that that Bill will share at any meetings of the BCPL overall gifts committee so we can see how that line up and you'll know what we're thinking in terms of how we handle gifts and on what timeline and how we handle the different ways a gift can come to the foundation. We also um, approved our routine correspondence like we do every meeting and outlined what we want to get done by the end of the year. We did start with five forms of letter or solicitation which we hope to have go out the week before Thanksgiving. That's what we're working on. And we are waiting to hear what happens next. Great. All this other stuff. Thank, you. Thank you for taking part of it. Sure. Yeah. I'm sorry I missed one. I kind of missed how that worked. <laughs> Bill's a great addition to you guys. Cool. That's very awesome. Yeah. Okay, moving right along. I don't see Bruce, but I see Dick. So, friends of the library. Bruce is uh, a nurse this afternoon. Uh, Did he say was, uh, she had very successful knee surgery this morning. So oh, what did you realize that? Yeah, um, they uh, they had to be there pre dawn to get ready for this, and so about nine o'clock when they got there, this morning was on. Yeah, but uh, and she that she thought was COVID. She was successful. Um, but uh, so he's he's going to be tied up for this this week. Um, but. Uh, there's something we can do for you. Um, let me figure out something to get out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> it's urgent. He came down yesterday when I, when I don't think he had to, and he just did. He said, no, I thought I'd just leave it there longer. I'm obsessed over it by himself. Um, but it, it went really well. It was just a routine yeah. thing. So, uh, we didn't anticipate it. I want to invite everyone to go down the stairs if you haven't. And any of the employees, and Andrew, if you want to go downstairs and see the changes that the friends have made downstairs and just the movement of everything, it's just amazing. You guys have done guys and girls. We, we call that chaos. <laughs> <laughs> that <would be> chaos. <laughs> you know, we're 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 working closely with the maintenance staff to uh, Coordinate our movements for getting out of their way so that they can move things where they need to have them. And so they do. They do that. Uh, and at the same time, you're selling stuff. Uh, well, our, our goal going forward, we, we've discussed this, I and mean, we have no intention of shutting down any of the business goes forward, even if we can get a new source. Uh, we just don't see that that's. We made it all the way through COVID. So we, we, we intend that, that, that eBay especially will be a function to allow me to move the money. It's really neat. You can walk down the shelves and see what's on eBay and, and mm. what, what's going on for the future. It, it's really neat. It's, it's yeah. fun. We're consulting 
uh, among ourselves about uh, new configurations. We've been blessed to have an architect on, on our team. He's uh oh, I'm looking forward to working with him. Uh, but uh, it's uh, we be careful really to do the quarter. Marcy's happy, so if she's happy, we're all happy. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a, a very good quarter. She hasn't given me. When's the next sale? The next sale will start December 2nd. This will be our second uh, quarterly sale. I think that's one of the reasons why this last quarter was so good, is because we were finally able to have a three day sale uh, for the year. We tried a bag sale, completely unannounced, un. un uh, Advertised, it was just a surprise everybody walking in on the opening, and it was probably the best thing we've ever done. <laughs> so, uh, probably at the end of each show, so we're going to do that. Is this a Medicare show? Okay, just checking. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> we, uh, we're in the process of getting bids for the uh, equipment changes that we'll have to, to make to accommodate the uh, construction. Lighting and IT and things like that. And uh, we'll, we'll bring that out of the next week and have to make a You know, one of the things we might be able to do with the lighting is when, when we get the team room going, we might want to get the two the electricians together for the company and see if we can't get a little better pricing for the Leo. We talked to Bacon because they've, they've done a lot of work in here. And so that's uh, quite honestly, we've been very happy with the bids they've given us so far. But yeah, I'd, I'd love to get them on. They didn't give us some advice, uh, and this may this may affect your team room if, if you need additional lighting there. So I assume most of the lighting in eBay is going to come out as you put in drop ceilings and different lighting. The taking people told us is don't get rid of those lights because you can't. So there'll be uh, some lighting that could go somewhere else in the library if there was to. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, so yeah, we're uh, we're pivoting some of our people to uh, to to help with uh, the move, with working with the uh, maintenance people, and uh, they in turn, of course, help with us. So it's it's working out. It's great. It's Thank you. Thank exciting. you so much. <laughs> Okay, you, I will skip Liz's report. She's unavailable today, but her report is in the package, so you all can read it. So we'll keep, keep going through. Okay, the whole business. Uh, we, are, we voted on the RFID package and we submitted that. Uh, update from Stephanie. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the staff for, for your participation and your help last week um, picking up some of my fumbles very quickly, and the friends for their participation and the foundation. Um, I spoke to each of the candidates on their way out, and they were very appreciative and very complimentary of the whole two days, they said they felt like they had really been vetted, um, that they had an opportunity to talk to a lot of different people. Um, they said that they had been on some interviews and, and it lasted an hour and they were out the door and it really wasn't worth the time to do that. But um, they really did appreciate the process and appreciate being able to meet with staff uh, and friends and the foundation. So um, hopefully, we'll know who that person might be. Okay, absolutely. I would like to say on, and I'm pretty sure that uh, every staff member would second this, but the search committee did an amazing job. Um, I have not uh, asked staff how they felt about it, but when I'm in the peripheral, they comment that they felt included and part of it. And uh, I would have to say, I absolutely agree. That has got to be the best, like that's the best, best practice. And I hope that we don't have to go through another one for a very, very, very long time. 
and yet I have kept all of it so that if we ever do, <laughs> right here. <laughs> But you guys did gangbusters. Just well, I, thank I you. thought um, Jared and Jennifer during the staff interviews, I thought that was just so professional. Mm -hmm. You know, the way, they, the way they did that and, and the bringing that company in to do yeah. the survey data and get it to us that quickly was just it's really amazing. amazing. So I'm not sure who on the search committee okay. suggested that, but it was a great group Right. Make sure we get into this. Thanks, Stephanie, for the incredible job that she did on the section committee as a chair. Of the so, is it public yes. knowledge who the offer was extended to? I'm, I didn't hear what you Is it public knowledge and information who the offer is extended to? No. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. <laughs> so Until they say yes and sign the contract, I guess. We, it was open to the public, and that's the end of that. For right now, and okay. so you, they don't know. The only people that know kind of are us. You all know who are in the board and, and what we discussed, and that's as far as it goes until we have some kind of commitment. I do not want to put it out to the general public unless somebody firmly agrees or disagrees on what we're doing, and I, I don't think it's right to do it. So we're in contact with all three of the people. I'm still in contact with them. So that's what that's the way I'm looking at for right now. And you all will know immediately as soon as as we have a little more firm information. And will that be at a next meeting or via email? Uh, I sure hope it's way before that. Because yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm just going well, I ran into somebody who seemed to know. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway, just trying to, what am I supposed to say? The search committee that, that and the four members here of the board that were on the search committee did an incredible job, and the three additional people were just amazing. And uh, just so you know, coming from the friends, we gave them a gift for being on the search committee, coming from the board and from the search committee and from the friends. So uh, we appreciate it. We appreciate them and the job that was done was just truly amazing. And, and it was great to just volunteer work on their behalf as well. You know, it was nice. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody got paid. <laughs> that would be nice, but no. <laughs> one, one quick follow up on that. While we were having a search committee meeting, uh, some members overheard me talking about my beer club. And then we were having a <laughs> tasting uh, on November 3rd. And so that is confirmed. The, yeah. bird, the, the beer club is having its meeting November 3rd at the Blackberry Brewery, oh. and all of you are invited to come. 5.30 will be a tour of the brewery and uh, open beer. And then we will have people we'll, we will move over to the beer hall and have pizza and snacks there. And you are all welcome. Is this the Maryville Homebrewers Association or a different club? Is it a Maryville? Mar What's Mar the name of your club? No, we don't have a name. Oh, okay. It's just a. 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 For the last four years since they opened, we did a Christmas tour, uh, and they really appreciated it. Then I invited Maryville City Council, and they came and appreciated it. And so this year we've got some some other members now, commissioners, and so we've got to get that one too. And and Blackberry really they appreciate it too, man. When you see what they have done in that in that small area and how much. They're, they're how much business they're doing. It's just just truly amazing, and it's here in Vaughan County and Maryland. It's really neat. So if you don't like beer, you can drink water. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll have soft drinks. <laughs>
Uh, before we move on, uh, just wanted to reach out. Um, something more important than that? Not at all. <laughs> no, no. Matter of fact, this is a, a sad follow up. But if anyone on the search committee knows of any receipts that are outstanding, if you can make sure that um, I have them. Uh, I've got the hotels. I've got. Um, I don't have any car receipts. So if, if you can uh, just double check that if you have sent your receipt in to me, um, I'd greatly appreciate that. I just want to give the total number. Have that ready for you. We'd like to have a total on that. So if you have any, any expenses whatsoever that you incurred, let me know that you can write your check. Okay. And so, yeah. okay. Um, Honestly, I would look. We can talk about the employee handbook, and if you want to run through that, and we will see how we're doing on that. If there's any comments, any comments not on it, or any changes that need to be made as part of our review of our system. So, has everyone had a chance to look through that? And are there any areas that anybody wants to bring up? I'll just say it was mainly just a correction on page seven. Um, 40 hours in a work week. Yeah, I, I think that's two words, work week instead of one. Oh, okay. It's uh, under the BCPL overtime compensation compensatory plan. I was wondering actually, in the state of Tennessee, I thought 32 hours was full time. I think it's 37. But not 40. It is, well, okay, so it depends on what kind of benefit and where you're going yeah. and it's 30, 30 hours, hours. Um, but um, what is it in this instance we work a different week than the county employees do they work a 37 and a half hour week where we work a 40 so we needed to spell out that what okay. we consider a full week is 40 hours okay. so that's about it. and I really like the fact that you took all that out that was already in there. <laughs> Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. The other question I had on that same page was, do we actually review everybody in 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, and 180 days? Miss Cynthia does, in fact. Okay. And so I will say Miss Cynthia because she has the, the oh, largest well, department. <laughs> All our managers do. Yes. But, um, yes. Wow. <laughs> okay. A any other questions or comments on, on one, that? One on page 16. In the old policy, there was a paragraph on cashing in sick leave on page 36 in the old policy. And I didn't know if that was, if we were actually doing that. <laughs> I've never heard of that, but. So, leave policy is continued. Because I know it goes toward TCRS. So I know Which paragraph is that? Okay. So, uh, if, since it is sick leave accrual and it says refer to the Blunt County, it means we will follow what they have in place. So, we're just eliminating that. We are in line with the county. So if the county pays out to a certain extent, we will pay out to a certain extent. Okay. Any other comments on that? Good. It's good. Okay. Thank you for the work. Do yes. I have a motion to accept the new hand, the handbook as it is now? So moved. Second. All in favor? Any opposed? Okay. And that's accepting it with Stephanie's yes. correction, right? Okay. So now when a person is going through orientation, they will get these two as one document and they will over. That's awesome. Good job. Yeah. Good job. Is that you, Anna? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was a team effort. It's ruined for <laughs> admin planning team. <laughs> so just good. And, and I do appreciate y'all changing uh, the policy about being able to contact me. Mm -hmm. oh, you pick that up. I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Uh, one other thing that was in your packet, and that was passed out at the work session, and I loved it, so I, I thought I would pass it out to all of you. Uh, but one thing that I really wanted you to pay attention to is number four. And, and I'm not having to say this to, to you all because uh, you all are doing this. Uh, you're, you're the most local board I've been on, which is great, and that's exactly what I want you to be. But uh, our job is not a, a, a game of follow the leader. Our job is to absolutely question what's going on. And so please thank you for doing that. Take this and pitch it if you want to. But take a look. The last thing I want to talk about, and then uh, I'm going to talk for another 10 minutes, just so yeah. nobody else told me. <laughs> uh, I hope all of you saw this in the, in the newspaper last week, and it's now all over the library. It's a quarterly report from, from these folks and the staff of what's going on in the library. It's incredibly well done. It's just really great. It lists all, all the programs that we have right now going on. I just for what for the library being basically shut down as we we, as we are. This is it's really great, it's really really good, and and so so informative. So anyway, thank you for for, for the staff and you guys for doing that. Okay, can I have a motion to uh, adjourn the meeting? Salute. Don't break the discussion. Is there any discussion on that motion? <laughs>